I thought we got shredded in the first half uh, on defense. They just moved so quick. Uh, we couldn't get out to the three-point shooting. Um, you know, you look at the statistics. We shot, we shot 64% uh, from the field, 45% from three, and 100% from the free throw deadline, and we were down nine. So that's defense. That's just, you know, our urgency to get back in conversion. We were so slow. They moved it. They broke us down quickly. Um, and we really struggled. Then the second half, you hold them to 29 points. Uh, but again, you know, you turn the ball over 17 times. It's, it's our margin of error is very, very small. And if we continue to turn the ball over like we do, uh, it makes it even more difficult, especially to come back in a game, let alone to, to win. Even when we were up in games, we turn the ball over. And that's why the lead becomes smaller. So um, again, we, can, we showed how good we can be. We show how bad we can be. And, and we just got to focus on ourselves. We got to just keep plugging and keep working to get better. And thought we missed some big layups in the second half as well. Uh, I was throwing out Kentucky. Do you think maybe offensively and defensively was this kind of as disappointed as you've been? Those yeah, yeah. When when you take Kentucky out of the equation, and you don't because you played them, but when you take them out, uh, we're playing we're, we're playing efficient offense, scoring well, and we're actually playing very good defense. We're holding teams to like 72 points a game, 41 percent from the field. When you take the Kentucky game out, um, but that didn't happen tonight. We didn't defend that way. Uh, I thought even when we did get stops late, they got some scrappy 50-50 rebounds on us that you got to get when you're down that much, nine at half, you got to have every one of those plays to come back and win it. Um, and again, I thought we showed, you know, you want to call it youth, inexperience, both um, missed layups, turnovers, execution, um, playing all these new guys and young guys. And it's not an excuse because it is who we are. Uh, we just got to keep getting better at it. And you just can't have such a, a bad start. Uh, uh, to a game and expect to win it. Coach, you guys seemed like you were in control uh, very early on in the game, and then UMBC went on a 20 to 5 run uh, in the first half to take the lead that they never lost. So, how do you limit teams uh, to avoid letting them go on the long run? Well, you got to limit your turnovers, you know, to extend that lead. Uh, this game was all about defensive conversion. You know, once we missed, they started getting us in conversion, spreading us out, spreading, and it was, you know, they shredded us. A bunch of timeouts in there, and it was, you know, different personnel, but we got to dig in and get stops, and we just couldn't get them. Uh, so that's on us. I thought we got too spread out. We didn't contain the basketball. Um, so again, that's a, that's a team defensive philosophy. You got to do a better job. And going off of that, how do you better defend the three point line? They shot fifty percent tonight. From three? Well, uh, again, it's containing the basketball is where it really starts. For this one, it was defensive conversion, meaning transition defense, getting back defensively. You got to get back to set your defense up. Obviously, easier to do when you make a basket. So we just went in that stretch where we missed. We struggled in conversion. Then it starts with containing the ball and not over helping. So then they shred us because we're not containing the ball. There's direct line drives, and we scramble to rotate. And these guys are an exceptional three-point shooting team. I mean, they, we knew going in they take 26 threes a game. And they make about over nine a game. We knew that. Uh, you just can't have a team make 12 on you. What's your assessment of how your, I guess your young guys have looked so far? Inconsistent. Yeah. They've looked like freshmen. They've been good one game and bad another game. Good young game and bad another game. And it's not even just a freshman. You know, our, like our sophomores have been the same way. They've had good spurts and bad spurts. You said earlier this season you guys would be basically scoring by committee. You guys going to be basically since losing our scoring last year. But when you guys get into holes like this, do you wish you had just like that go-to shooter? Yeah, I mean, well, Josh Steele, when he plays, he's that. Kale Abrahamson is that. We don't have really our full team intact right now. Um, so, And both those guys are actually guys that can shoot the basketball, so it makes us a little different. When you're facing a team like this, how big is having Renee? You know, as an older guy, you can put in there, and you really yeah. feel like he had you guys a spark done. Yeah, I mean, we did, and we went went with him, played 28 minutes. But even Renee, you know, he's an older guy, but he doesn't have a ton of game experience. You know, he's like a sophomore in game experience wise too. And I thought our lack of game experience showed tonight. Um, why was Josh? Oh. Um, it's a, a an institutional issue. I mean, that's. So that's all I got. Even though you played the last two. That's all I got. Do you have any plan on expanding uh, Jordan Robinson's minutes? He had yeah, he has. He has. You know, and again, Jordan's done a good job for us scoring the basketball for us. And again, it's a little funky when they went with those four and fives that can shoot threes. It's hard to play Jordan, and it was hard to play Darius in that game. So uh, I think with more traditional lineups, we threw him in a little bit more. Uh, he's given us a good spark offensively. Uh, if he can continue to improve defensively, he's going to be playing more.
the improvement defensively in the second half? Was that just a matter of execution, or was there an adjustment that you really I mean, we made a little bit of an adjustment, but not really much. It was more about going back to the basics of what we needed to do, and we did a poor job of it, you know, addressing the transition defense, addressing containing the basketball. We did a better job of it, and we cut it from nine to three pretty quick, but then we had one, two, three turnovers in a row. Empty possessions would lead to transition, which gets the lead back up. So it's, it's twofold, it's offense and defense in that second half. You guys got hit on Friday, so what, is that, what does this rivalry game mean to this program? Um, I mean, it's a rivalry They're right down the road. I think it's, you know, you know it, it's the traditional rivalry. Uh, it's not a league rival, but it's a traditional rival. And I haven't spent any time on them, so I have no, you know, idea really. I'm going to watch some tape tonight and tomorrow morning. Oh, a win, oh, win would be great. Last 18 of 20 yeah, a win would be great. I mean, you know, they're they're a ACC school. They're down the road. There's a lot of pride. These guys know each other. Um, they play with against each other and with each other in the summer. Um, you know, Pitt's been one of the dominant basketball programs in college basketball. They've had a great run over the past 15 years and NCAA tournament teams and a whole deal. And you know, like I said, they're in the ACC with Atlantic 10. That'd be a great opportunity for us to go after an ACC team and. The great tradition of the battles in the past and the student bodies, and it, it'll be a tremendous opportunity. It'll be tremendous if we can win that game. But right now, we got to focus on ourselves. Right now. All right. Thanks, guys.